Howdy folks, in this episode of the Smoogleville Workshop I'll be showing you what went into making this oak bench. So this project came about when my cousin and fellow woodworker John shared this photo with me of a bench he designed and built nearly half a century ago when he first took up the hobby. I was so taken with the design I asked him for the measurements, which he kindly provided. The original you see here is actually made from a timber known as Parana Pine. That's Parana, the region, not Piranha, the carnivorous fish, which has been my misconception since I just researched the species today. Anyway, it's a Brazilian wood that actually isn't pine at all, although it does belong to the conifer family. Its scientific name is Araucaria angustifolia, but most people just know it as Brazilian pine. What's more, it's no longer available as the tree is regarded as critically endangered. This was a popular wood in the UK in the 1970s and 80s. I remember my grandfather making some kitchen cabinets for my nan using Parana pine and I still recall its earthy smell with pink and brown streaks in the grain. However, it's nearly impossible to find now other than as reclaimed wood. So this reproduction of the Burns bench will have to be made with white oak. Now that's a bummer, isn't it? So as well as some photographs, John had sent me some measurements as well of the original bench. And so the first thing I did was work out the sizes and try and develop some kind of a drawing of the different parts and figure out the materials I was going to need to actually finish the job. So the first step in this process is to prepare some timber and I have here some uh, eight quarter oak rough sawn and I've got some five quarter over there as well so I'm going to prepare some boards ready for the bench project. So let's get started using the old thickness so let's get the dust mitigation going and then we'll uh, run this down uh, really as thick as I can get it but a, a, a minimum of an inch and three quarters and on this Triton the the a full turn is a sixteenth so because this is a much harder wood I'm actually going to do it in, in increments of 30 seconds so I'll turn this half a turn and uh, and I'm turning the board each side so that uh, I don't waste any any material uh, getting one side clean and then flipping it and realizing I've got a lot more work to do on the other so I tend to flip this when I'm doing this to try and preserve as much of the wood as possible and this is an absolutely gorgeous I can see already absolutely gorgeous piece of oak. All right, let's carry on. I'll use the iPhone to make a movie of that, because that is actually really, and the lighting over here is really showing it up. There, there we go. Medullary rays, really gorgeous and very pronounced in this wood. Some really nice clear ones there, look at that. <laughs> A delightful artifact of oak. Right, it's, it's very clear. I only, I only need like uh, about uh, three quarters of an inch to an inch thickness on the legs. And this timber is, is uh, well over an inch and a half. And it seemed an awful ways to just shave it all off with the thickness. So I'm actually gonna use the bandsaw. I'm gonna cut the, lot, the length of it and, and uh, I'm gonna cut, cut, it, cut the board long ways this way. So I've, I'll have about a half an inch board and an inch board like that. So I'm gonna do that rather than rather than uh, rather than waste a lot of timber so here we go
the job is getting the, the timber ready, isn't it? Right, well that's come out at, let's see. And the thickness. All right. Seven eighths, seven eighths of an inch. Lovely, all right. So now, now let's get the, I'm gonna make the, the leg parts. Uh, and I'll be doing that on the bandsaw next. So uh, some nice, some more nice curve cuts to do. And I'm going to, I'm going to use this template to do it. And uh, we're just wide enough to, to do that by the looks of it. Just about, just about. Right. Okay. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is I don't have a jointer here, so uh, I need a straight edge so I can cut this square. This is the top, and I was hoping to get 11 inches, but I'm not gonna quite make it. The original one's 11 inches, but this is 11 inches now, and I've gotta clean the edges up. So, and I don't have a track saw either, because that would also do this, but I'm gonna use this, this straight edge here, and then I've set it so I'm running the saw with the widest part of the saw, on the timber and I'm going to run that through and that should give me because it's it's kind of to exaggerate it's bowed out like that so I'm going to trim that off get a straight line then throw it up on a table saw and straighten out properly and hopefully I'm going to get about ten and a half ten and three quarters out of it and this will be the top for the for the bench so let's uh, let's get that cut going In fact, it occurs to me that was so effective that I've just flipped it over and I'm gonna not even bother putting it up on the table saw. I'll just run this, this hand saw over it again and clean that edge up with that. <laughs> okay. Well, here you go. That's it. So having got the top made, I was now working on the feet. And what I've done here is I've got the shape I want in one end of one of the pieces of block I've cut out. And then you can see there, I flipped that over to get this symmetrical, I've flipped that over and marked that shape on both ends of the next foot, which I'll then cut off and then finally use that as a template to cut the end of the first foot again.
So what I'm doing now is I'm, I'm just using this homemade center finder here to, to, uh, to mark the center of this. And I've marked the distance for the, the length, if you like, of the, uh, of the tenon that's on the leg there. And I've marked, marked the center of that. And then I'm scribing a line down, down the middle of that, like that, so that I've got a groove, okay? And the, the, the Falstner bit will find that groove and I'm gonna cut a series of holes on the drill press. I've uh, marked the depth on there. And then I'll just clean it out with a chisel and that should, uh, that should make a nice, neat little, um, nice little mortise. So let's go over to the drill press. I've set up the drill press with a 3 8 falsner bit and I've also put a mark on there as well so I can see how deep to go with the cuts so I don't overcut and come through the bottom and I don't undercut and not allow the tenon to go into this mortise that I'm basically cutting out here and then uh, and then I'll take it over to the bench once I've got all these holes in there and it's ready to start actually chopping a mortise and I'm using a 3 8 chisel there to get my depth and square up the hole and basically I'm fitting it there for the tenon that's at the top part of the leg that's actually going to be the top the narrower part of the leg so the next process was to use the bandsaw to cut a tenon into each end of the stretcher bar that I'll be using to hold the legs together so I'll end up with a peg in it and so there you can see maybe that blade's getting a little blunt look at that burned to a crisp <laughs> right, so now what we're going to do is this stretcher has got to be fitted and i'm going to make a, a through mortise on on the legs so it's going to go it's going to pass through so i've got to make a hole this size through there and then i'm going to make a hole another hole in this and put a make an oak wedge to put in there all right, so that's that's what we're trying to do this morning. All right, so so now I'll drill a series of of holes on the drill press to uh, make that to open that up, ready for the ready for the stretcher. chisel time we're ready I used a marking knife to go around this edge I want a really tight edge on one side which will be the which will be the outside of the leg and it's to take take the stretcher is going to come through there so I've gone around with a marking knife and now I'm going to use I've sharpened this chisel and used and gone right down to stropping as well so that should yeah, that is scary sharp right now. So we want a good sharp chisel and we're going to go in here and start cleaning out cleaning out these uh, These cuttings so I'll just go around the edge With a one inch chisel drop it into the marking knife slot there And the first stretcher fitted let's let's wiggle that on there mm, 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 mm. yeah okay law boy and so next I'm gonna make a hole here I'll mark where it goes and I make a peg that goes in there that'll hold that whole structure together there's a lot of strength gonna of the design comes out of this stretcher going across here and that will pull that up tight and square and real nice okay right that's one end now I've got to cut the other one 
So what's next is I'm going to drill a three quarters inch hole in here and I'm actually I've actually moved there's the center and I've come back about a sixteenth just so that when I push the peg in there that there'll actually be some material missing beyond where the leg goes up to so that's the that line there is where the leg face comes to and so I want this hole to be slightly behind that so that it pulls the leg in when I put the peg in so here's how we do that I'm just going to go in and use a three quarter inch it's a little bit tricky to hold this on but there we go three quarter inch false a bit there to get a nice clean hole this will do most of the cutting out work for for me let's find the inner there we go there we go and I just broke through marvelous make sure that's square and then the half inch just to straighten those up there we go right time to make some pegs some oak pegs to put through the holes and we will be in really good shape So let's start, I'm going to use the sander to actually make that fit. Okay, so it's time to do the actual assembly now, the, the best part. And how I'm going to do that is I'm going to start with the stretcher here. And let's just get these, making sure I put them the right way. Let's get these set into each other. So let's do that. Let's see. That's it. That's better.
right I've just put a second coat of the tongue oil on here and uh, I say just I did it yesterday and it's dried now uh, this is what I like about the tongue oil is it, it's not greasy uh, it is slightly sticky still I think it just needs to uh, dry out a touch more but I'm going to take a lot of that off with just a clean cloth it said lint free I don't have anything particularly lint free I've just got a well washed old dish cloth here and I'm just going to use that to kind of buff up the the look this is the second coat of tongue oil that I put on here and actually you can feel it kind of let go of the stickiness as you polish the as you polish it so that's actually coming up quite feeling quite quite smooth now and you know it's got, I've got a nice sheen to it I'm quite pleased with the actual look of that stuff it's the first time I've used tongue oil so I'm, I'm, I'm pretty much sold on that I think for for an indoor piece of furniture possibly even outdoor furniture would would benefit from from the tongue oil um, I, I do like the oil finishes they they do seal things up and they protect the wood well and should add years of, of life to the to the material and to the to the furniture so there it is folks all I've got all the all that's left for me to do is to put these little pegs in and uh, let get those seated in I'll just give those a tap with the mallet it actually stuck itself to the to the bench let's give those a just a gentle tap with the mallet okay lovely that's it just till they firm up and that should that's it that folks is one oak bench and uh, we have a spot picked out for it in the living room Please click the like button if you found this episode helpful and we'd love to have you as a subscriber as there's always something interesting going on in the Smoogleville workshop. Music